moving our average for about three weeks. So right let's, here at Let's welcome Chris Anderson from X-Men Mining. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Uh, hi, Mike. How are you? Great, great. Chris, well, welcome to the zoo. Uh, Dave's in Virginia. Charles is in Boston. I'm in Florida. And, uh, of course, Michael King is in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tell us about your mining company. As you, You're probably, uh, this would be what, 730 in the morning in Vancouver? That's right, sunny Vancouver. Sunny Vancouver. Well, it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It really is yeah. one of my favorite. Yes, it is. Well, um, where should I start? Uh, start with the. We're listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, the symbol XIM, and uh, we're trading now uh, in the states on the symbol XXMMF. Um, we are a uh, have we have about 14 uh, million shares out at the moment. Um, we have some very good shareholders that are shareholders of our company as we've been moving forward here. Uh, w one of the key shareholders we have a gentleman named Eric Sprott who's a, a well-known precious metal uh, fund investor, and uh, he is uh, just owns under 10% of our company. Uh, we have another gentleman named Ian Gordon, who is an uh, international speaker and a, a writer on long wave analytics, uh, who also owns just under 10% of the company. These are some of our key shareholders. And myself, I, I own just about a million shares of the company myself. We were, uh, we've been looking, sorry, you going to say something there, Mike? I said, wow, that's unbelievable. You yeah, so we, we, I'm and a lucky Frank, man. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, sound, you sound like it, Chris. Uh, now, your company uh, was formerly El Elm Tree Minerals. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, Elm Tree Minerals was the, the previous company, and we had uh, stepped in, took the vehicle over. Um, we did a restructuring on it, cleaned it up, and then we're looking for an asset. Uh, that we could put in there. One of the, one of our objectives was uh, when we started this this process was in 2013, and you know the resource sector hasn't been very favorable, uh, so we were looking for assets stuff that we could go into production with. So we we've, we've partnered up with a, a, a mining group, a very well known mining group here in in British Columbia. And we were looking at assets in British Columbia that were in the precious metal space. I mean, I don't know if you know the history of uh, gold in B.C., but it's quite famous. Um, there's been many discoveries here, many gold rushes in British Columbia. And, and so we wanted to find some assets here in B.C. Uh, with a mining group that we could expedite on and actually work towards uh, generating some cash flow. You know, so, uh, San, uh, San Francisco got all the publicity for the gold rush. But, you know, <laughs> but in reality, you had probably a larger rush in in uh, British Columbia oh yeah we've got uh, we've, we've got several uh, key gold assets here in British Columbia and it's a very gold rich precious metal uh, rich community and as you know uh, Christy Clark who I uh, um, uh, had a chat with on Saturday night uh, is uh, the premier of the province and their policy is to bring mining into BC so we're we're in a very, very favorable environment uh, with uh, known uh, um, opportunities for finding uh, gold resources. And we've been very lucky because we've, we've, we've picked up some very strategic and key assets in, in British Columbia that are extremely well known. Um, I just want to finish off on the people side because it's important to know who's working with us. Um, there's a couple of gentlemen that are involved with us. One of them is named Al Beaton and another's named Alex McPherson. These two gentlemen are, are senior in age, uh, in their 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, and they've been uh, uh, in the mining business, contract mining business, for oh, some odd 45, 50 years. And uh, Al himself has ran uh, the Erickson Gold Mine, which was one of the most profitable gold mines here in B.C. Uh, in the early 80s. Um, and Alex was involved in Diamet, one of the uh, diamond mines up in uh uh, Northern Territories, and they've been in contract. They've done over 50 different contracts in Southern British Columbia, involved in many different operations here. Um, so Al and Alex uh, also, uh, besides being well known, they own their own equipment. They've got they're fully equipped. They've got their own drill rigs and uh, trucks and scoops and all, all the equipment that you can need for uh, doing small small underground and uh, mining operations. Um, 
so those are those are our key partners. They're they're big shareholders in the company, and um, uh, uh, they were instrumental in bringing forward some of our key assets. And we have we have essentially three assets in the company. The first asset that they brought forward was a project uh, in Gold Drop uh, near Greenwood, BC. And uh, that was owned by another friend of theirs that was in the contract mining business named Ed Brown. And uh, Ed's had this property since the early 80s. Um, it, there was a small uh, ball mill set up on the property, and it was uh, essentially being high graded for uh, some of their better resources on the property. It had been in, in Ed's hands since the 1980s. And um, uh, um, so basically it's had no modern geological uh, processes put on it. And um, in the center of the property was a mine called the Dentonia Mine, and they pulled out um, uh, 115,000 tons, I think, of about 10-gram material, uh, 10 grams per ton ounce. So the property, uh, all the surrounding district around the, the initial mine, all the other veins, extensions and stuff, Ed, Ed's been just high grading them, and it's had seen some small-scale production over the years, but no modern technique. Um, so in the process of, of bringing this property forward to us, we, we, um, there's a lady named Linda Caron who's now joined our team, uh, is, uh, is essentially our VP of Exploration. And uh, Linda, Linda comes from um, uh, uh, Grand Forks. She's been working in this district for 30-some-odd years. And she's currently uh, under contract with a company called Kinross, uh, and they have an operation down at uh, Buckhorn. Um, one of one of the one of Linda's jobs has been is to, um, if you're unfamiliar with the Buckhorn facility at Washington State, there, uh, Kinross is looking for feed for the mill. I, apparently, it's got about 16 months worth of feed left, and uh, it's been a, one of the more profitable centers in uh, in Kinross's operation for generating cash flow. Um, and Linda's job over the last uh, uh, two years has been to look for source feed for that operation. And uh, so every month she writes a report and uh, she looks at all the exploration opportunities and, and developments in northern Washington and southern British Columbia. And Gold Drop was on her target list. And yeah, basically because there's, there's milling operations within the district, it's seen high-grade production, uh, and, but it's had no ge modern geological techniques applied. Um, so Linda and Al got together and uh, they looked at it from a geological perspective and a mining perspective. And uh, the summer of 2013, it was reviewed. Um, there was some sampling done. It came up quite favorable. And uh, they approached me in early, early part of 2013. And I said, well, if we can show that we can get some cash flow off this property, I'd be very interested in doing something. And uh, in October of 2013, we signed a deal with them. And um, Put that project into uh, Exum and Mining, and uh, as it stands now, we've we've got it fully permitted uh, for uh, drilling and trenching, and we're looking we tra we're targeting uh, three 2,500 ton bulk samples on that that we're looking at half ounce material that we're shooting for uh, at the end of the summer here. So right now we just started our, our exploration work uh, and development work on those on those projects. It's got several different addits, high grade addits on it. Um, it, the team had worked on it privately over the summer last year, um, and they went in. The, Linda chose one vein. They went in and they they they, um, they sampled that vein, and they were they found uh, on the high side two ounces per ton gold. So there there is a current forty three one hundred one yeah. on that project, mm -hmm. and uh, that got filed on CDAR. But but that's not our key flagship. Actually, what happened over the summer was um, as the team was working together, and I got to know the group. Um, there's been a project in BC that's been you know, marred in controversy and held in, in, in fractional ownership. It's, it's seen quite a bit of publicity over uh, since the 70s when it's first discovered, but it's seen no serious production or serious geological work, uh, no matter what the attempts are. It's just been uh, it's been picked over and high graded and fought over and tied up in the courts, and it's it's one of the um, first epithermal discoveries ever made in BC. It's extremely high-grade gold, very nuggety. Uh, it's a very big system. Um, and uh, uh, it, until recently, it was uh, owned by separate separate groups. It's been tied up in the courts and stuff. And that's called the Brett Project. Ah, Brett so claims, the, right? 
Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. On your on your map, there's like a big dot there. It says Brett claims. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was a project actually. I don't know if you remember a company called Corona when they had Hemlo back uh, with Murray Pezum and Ned Goodman back in the '80s. They Hemlo was a major gold discovery here in in uh, Canada. And uh, um, when they were remodeling Cremo, they had that project. And they kept this uh, the Brett project. Um, it's uh, it, we managed to um, uh, get an opportunity to, to get involved there because Alex McPherson and Al Beat were the were the guys that did some of the original work on this project. It's seen uh, it's had about uh, it's a it's a big epithermal system and it's had it's had 65 percent of the property has been covered by soil grid, but it's seen 10,000 meters of diamond drilling, well 14,000 meters of diamond drilling. 3,000 meters of RC drilling. It's had uh, 1,700 foot added put in on the main shear zone. It's had two bulk samples, and the last bulk sample was done in process at Tech Cominco, and it ran. They were taking coarse gold out of the ground with a backhoe, several uh, several hundred meters away from the main shear zone, and they ran it through a trail and got, uh, which is not a gold processing facility, and got 0.8 of an ounce. Um, since that time, it's it's basically seen no work, uh, and it was owned between a couple of juniors, a uh, little bit of a convoluted situation. Um, but both Al, both Alex and Al, uh, um, which are pretty serious miners, have always figured this is a gold mine in the making. And uh, they got together with Linda, and the three of them started telling me that, you know, if we could get this project, this would be this would be a major coup for Exodus. Um we worked diligently, and I don't want to go into the whole story of it, but it was a it was a, a very cumbersome and complicated scenario. We managed to unravel it, and we managed to get 100% of that asset into XMN Mining. And uh, uh, right away, as soon as we did that, we had miners from all over BC starting to contact the company and, and buying our stock. And, and we went from a, a 15, 20 cent stock up to a, we've traded as high as a dollar 34 as of late. Um, yeah, we've got. Um, and did you say uh, there are only 14 million shares outstanding? There's only 14 million shares out. We've seen a little pressure on the stock just recently, and that's because we've had a 25 cent uh, uh, financing that we did four months ago come free trading. And um, there's there we knew there was a, some of the participants in that. Um, uh, it was about six seven hundred thousand shares. We figured was going to come free trading that would probably need to turn over, and, and that's exactly what's happened. So we're trading around 90 cents at the moment. Um, and we've got about, a, I don't know, approximately a million dollars in the bank, and we're working on doing a, a $5 million raise at a dollar ten. Hey, and Chris. I that we'll be able Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think Charles and I were uh, a little shocked when you actually said that uh, the minister in uh, your province uh, was actually supporting your industry. Uh, see, in, oh, in, in, yeah. here in the lower 48, um, we don't exactly get that from our governmental officials all the time. So that that's, <laughs> that was kind of a shock of what yeah. you had to say there, you know. <laughs> yeah, you got all yeah. the right people. Boy. Amazing. Yeah, it is. And, and, and the fact that. Uh, what a cast. Well, and you know what, Mike? Uh, I remember reading about this Brett claims we uh, the Canadian government brought us up uh, oh before the Calgary Olympics and and you know we were doing stories on you know Calgary prepares for the Olympics but I remember reading about this in the early 80s so it so this this area has been around that long Chris oh yeah I mean oh. it this is a, this is a this is one of the first epithermal systems ever discovered. But it, <laughs> no group has properly had to have it all together under one camp and be able to expedite on a on a proper geological program on this. We've done that now, and wow. we built a team. And you're going to see you're going to see some more news coming forward. We got Linda Curran, who is is with Kinross Steel as our our VP of, VP of exploration. She's wanted to take this project on as her key asset her whole career. Now she has it. Um, we've got another gentleman who joined our team, John May. John May also comes from Kinross. Uh, he was their internal GIS modelist. He was also one of their epithermal specialists in-house and works in Washington State. Kinross is a pretty He's big all- name. It is a pretty big name, yeah. Yeah. 
So we've we've done all the uh, we've done all the data compilation on all the previous work. We spent the first two months, three months, gathering every single report, driving around in the field, meeting every geologist that's ever worked on this property, and gathering all the data. We've compiled it all now. We've completed a GIS model. We're choosing our drill targets. We've got two field crews out there in the in the field right now. I just came back from the property on Saturday. Um, I was out there actually, and and the property sits in the Premier's riding. So I actually was at the uh, BC Liberal uh, Convention uh, in Kelowna and uh, uh, had a chat with Christy Clark as well while I was there. So I invited her out to the property. We'll see if she comes. Um, the, uh, um, the project now, we've, we've got a couple other gentlemen that are joining our team. There's news coming forward on that. They're, they are the best. We've got the, the best caliber of brains around uh, that we could put together in building a brain trust to work on an epithermal system. And this is a big system. Uh, it is uh, several kilometers wide that we've uh, got disseminated uh, uh, mineralized gold, and uh, it's several kilometers long. It's, uh, it's heavily, heavily altered. Um, it, you know, as I told you, there was um, a, quite a bit of drilling, and the drilling results on those were phenomenal. I mean, we, we got numbers of 55 feet of one-ounce material. There, there is lots of intersections there that are multi-ounce material, and some of them have not even been followed up. There's, there's soil grids there that are running exceptionally high numbers. I mean, this is, this is a, this is a really an exceptional, one of the best properties I've ever had, and I, I've been in the business 15 years. It, it is by hand the far, far the best property I've ever come across. So, from my perspective, uh, I, I think we've got a, a real opportunity here if it's managed correctly, and. Uh, so far, we've been able to assemble. Uh, While well, the project deserves the kind of the kind of cast that's coming forward here, because we're we're really attracting some people that are well known names in the in the mining and uh, uh, mineral exploration business, and we're just getting started. We don't, you know, we are we, we haven't even started any marketing or promotion, and uh, um, this this you know look at our stock price. Um, it, it's just a well known property. It's now 100% in our, in our control. We've got an excellent team to expedite on the program. There's so much news coming down the pike, gentlemen. Um, you know, we've got all our permits in place as well. We're ready to do drilling. Uh, we're, we're looking at doing our geophysics. We're, we're going to be out there in the field. Uh, we're out there now. Um, it's it's going to be a inter- very, very interesting summer. And I don't know if, you, if your listeners are believers in the precious metal market, but this, we're in unprecedented, unterritorial times right now. There's more money being printed around the world, um, and I'm a really strong believer, as the shareholders of Exxon, that uh, we are going to see a, an appreciation on the gold price um, that, uh, you know, I, I, who knows where it will go from here. But I certainly, I certainly see a future in the, gold, in the gold space going forward, and that's the space I want to be in. I want to be in it with a, a good asset with a mining team that knows how to expedite on that asset and in a, in a jurisdiction that's friendly to that, to that, to our mining activities where we've got the ability to, to, to ship ore to, to uh, uh, mill facilities that are all within the district and create cash flow. Because uh, at the end of the day, I mean, even in the depression, home stakes that their shares were the highest during the course of the depression. You know, this is, this is for me, this is my personal choice. It's where I like to be space I'd like to be, the project I'd like to be on, and the team I'd like to be working with. I think if we, all the stars for myself are aligning perfectly. Well, it sounds like you've built an all-star team. It is an all-star <laughs> I mean, it's, it's yeah. It's, so it's what's amazing. the actual, what's your actual price taking it out of the ground? Um, those, those are the kind of numbers you have to look at when you're, when you're, when you get into the mining engineering. We figure out what structures we want to go in on first and stuff like that. Um, right. So I can't answer that question right now. That's a little premature of a question to, to answer. But with this, I can tell you right now, in, in doing my due diligence and working with a lot of the major gold companies and talking, and we've had a lot of them coming forward, a lot of them wanting to sign CAs. We have signed CAs with a couple of serious groups. Um, they want to take a look at all our data. They want to get involved. And uh, all of these companies seem to be looking for exactly what we have, high-grade, I mean, this is extremely high grade. Um, uh, well, anytime you, can, anytime you can get, you know, measurable gold using a backhoe, I'd say, yeah, <laughs> that tends to work yeah. pretty well. 
Uh, th- th- this, I, we, we were up there on the, we were up there on Saturday. There's free gold on the property. I mean, it, it, you know, there's lots of free gold on the property. It's not a, it's not a property that you, you know, you're, you're looking at complicated metallurgy or anything. The bulk samples that they did before, I, I think the numbers were, and in, and in, in, I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it was around 96% recovery that mm-hmm. they got through it. Yeah, you know, it's a, this is a, a an interesting system. There's what, it's so much alteration. It was a big thrusting zone through there, and it's created many of these um, high-grade uh, shear systems throughout the property. And they need to be explored, and they're all, they all seem to be mineralized, or a majority of them, uh, with uh, precious metals. I mean, there is a, there's a component to silver to it, but we're focused on the gold. Now, okay, uh, you just touched on it. Uh, will you be uh, extracting silver along with it? Um, I, that's no? a, that's again. Uh, we're going to focus on the gold. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's yeah, that's where our, our main. And here's an interesting thing. I'll tell you about it. If you if you went back in time and you looked at what was going on during the depression, you'll see that that gold production almost tripled during that period of the of the depression. Silver, silver production stayed the same, but its price dropped 25%. So I'm telling you, in times when times are hard, people actually naturally go to gold, right? I mean, that's what historically has happened. So um, that's where we want to focus. That's where we want to have our our, uh, our main focus on, gold and gold production. Well, that sounds great. Well, you're on the right track, but I certainly hope we don't have hard times. Um markets all appear poised um, to go a lot higher. Gold's been under some pressure. So other metals, like copper, is flying right now. Mm -hmm. And the Um, huge shortage of of, uh, platinum is keeping that one pretty strong uh, here, too. So do you have other uh, metals also? Well, we have a... uh, besides gold, yeah, we have in in at the uh, Brett project. You mean? Yes. Uh, no, well, at the Brett, we're just we're just focused on the gold. I mean, that's that's the main thrust of everything there. There is some other minor metals, but nothing of any significance. And that's what makes the property unique. It's not encumbered with other, uh, you know, or not covered with other minerals where it makes it complicated. It's a very simple metallurgical process. Uh, simple well, as simple can be. You got the best cast of characters. You certainly have a great company started. No question yeah. about that. My God, that sounds amazing. Get better people. Yeah, Chris, uh, how, uh, how much drilling can you actually do in the winter time? Because um, I would imagine um, what come October, November, gets a little testy up there. Yeah, we're gonna be. We're gonna. We've got our drill permits in place now. I think we're we're good for setting up uh, 20 drill pads and 32 holes. That's what we've got permitted right now. Okay. And um, so we we plan to expedite that on the latter part of the summer here. We're just doing our, our field work and choosing our targets, and I know they're coming up with uh, some very interesting targets right now. So we'll be releasing that shortly, and um, and then we'll look at be drilling. Uh, you know, a latter part of July or August. September that period. That's when we'd be, we'd be into their drilling period. Um, then it's uh, then we do have uh, um, snow, so we'll be down for um, uh, December, October, uh, December, January, February, and March, pretty much, before we can get much in there. But then that's we'll be we'll be working on our, our technical analysis and doing our report updates and stuff, and get ready for the next field season. Boy, that sounds amazing, uh, Mike. Any other questions for Chris? I'm I'm just amazed with the uh, quality of people that he's picked. Yeah, be on the team. It's just a super team, and uh, so what is the the, what's the authorized on the stock? Say that again. What's the authorized? You have 14 million outstanding. What's the authorized? That's fully outstanding. That's it. 14 million. Hmm. Yes. I mean, I'd actually, I'd like to, and and that includes the twenty-five can, can cent I, deal that you just yeah. uh, that just went. Okay. Yeah, and, and and let me tell you something. That over the last two months, we've traded over five million dollars worth of paper, north of a dollar. So we yeah. have Oh no, I can part, see it. We, I can and, see it in the chart. It's just that it's hard to, you know, with only fourteen million, and the float is obviously 
a, a fairly minor fraction of that, um, you know, it, it generally ends up being um, a retail story for brokers as opposed to an institutional story because there's no way that an institution can come in and buy a million shares. Correct. Now, yeah. here's a couple other things. We have no warrants out on the stock either. Okay. We've done forced conversions on all our warrants. So if you want to own a piece of this company, you have to own the stock. You have to buy it in the market. Right. There's no warrants. There's nobody. We don't have any walls in front of us that are set up to, that are hold the stock back where we have to plow through warrants or fix price. We're, we're done. And uh, the other thing is we've done no flow through in the company. So it's all been hard dollars. We've raised all our money hard dollars. So all the stock is common stock that's trading. And what, uh, are the, what do the insiders hold? What do the insiders own? Well, I told you myself, I'm, I'm just under 10%, so I'm around right. 7 okay. points. So I got a million shares. Uh, Eric Sprott is personally not through his funds. Uh, he's under 10%. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what uh, his, his holding is, 9% nine, or something. Uh, but he uh, actually allowed us to use his name. We, we announced it, that he was personally taking a position. Um, a, another gentleman that's involved with us, and he's, he's on our advisory board, and he's covering us. Uh, and his write-up is a big believer in, in BC and BC Gold and our project and our team. It is uh, Ian Gordon, and he's somewhere in there under, under 10%. And then we have several strategic uh, high net worth investors that have taken positions uh, uh, in in this in this project because they know uh, the merits of the asset uh, from you know the, there's some previous reports you guys can review if you wish to they're not 43101 compliant but they're they're uh, they certainly can tell the tale here um, right so so uh, uh, that's kind of where we're sitting wow so, I'll tell you what what a story Chris well uh, when you uh, have further announcements, please uh, keep Mike King and uh, Charles in the loop, and uh, uh, we will gladly have you back any time. And I'm still in the state of shock that you know <laughs> that that province is behind all of this. Uh, you know, we uh, we get a little pushback from government down here, so uh, that's very refreshing. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, gentlemen. I re appreciate you having me on the show. You bet. Pleasure. You bet. All right. Well, you know, and, and uh, Chris, your stock started what at ninety cents today? Was it? Yeah, we're trading around ninety cents. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and and I'm telling you, gentlemen, there's a fair bit of news coming down the pipe. So let's see what happens in the in the future here. Sounds good. Very good. All right, Mike, uh, you hit a home thanks run on much. this one. Wow, Chris, thanks for being with us. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. And. Uh, Charles, this, uh, what is a yeah, chart? Yeah, it's like? a great story, and uh, we have a 43, uh, and it, they've got 43 one-on-one -on -one studies. They have everything and all the right people behind it, in Eric Sprott, Ian Gordon, and, of course, Princeton Research. <laughs> there you go. Boy, I'll tell you, Michael. I, it, Do they pay any dividend? Not yet. Did they he, just started. Not yet. Okay. All right. Wow. They're just starting. Yep. But we have a Rule 17B. Um, we're supposed to be uh, getting uh, 30,000 uh, shares of stock or cash equivalent. And so it's all set up to, to be something real. All right. And even though gold is in the doldrums, today is down uh, $15, $17. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think the price of gold means anything to this company. Yeah, I mean, when you can, again, I'll say it like I said it before with Chris, when you can get measurable amounts of gold using a backhoe, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, how ludicrous is that? Yeah, and, and the stock symbol for uh, Eximin is... Well, it's X-M-I-N in, in, on the TSE and X-X-M-M-F on our market, on yeah. the... Okay, and, right. and, and the spread is not too bad. It's you know about a penny. It's eighty cents bid offered at eighty one cents, or eighty point oh seven offered at eighty one oh four. So you know, I mean, it's wow, right there. Repeat the uh, stock symbol again, Mike. We've had several X, calls X, on it. It's uh, X X M M F. Okay, awesome. As foreign stock. So people, have so five people symbols. who get confused with the X Men. 
<laughs> movie that came out over the weekend doing so well. You do well to buy the stock. <laughs> That's right. Good line, Charles. And with that, we'll, we'll call it a day, call it a week. Wow, what a show, huh? Let's hear it for British Columbia. And my favorite city, uh, Vancouver. My favorite city on this planet. Have a good one. My King, Las Vegas. Dave Rogers in Virginia. And Charles Moskowitz in lovely Cape Cod. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, WPSL TV, the treasure coast of Florida.